it kills more people than wars, murders, and car crashes combined. And yet, we toast to it every weekend. We celebrate with it. We grieve with it. We've built entire civilizations around it. So here's the question that haunts biology, culture, and every Friday night. Why do we love a poison so much that we can't imagine life without it? Our story begins with a tiny organism that never meant to make us happy. Meet yeast, a single-celled fungus with a simple problem, too many competitors. So millions of years ago, yeast evolved into a weapon, a chemical poison designed to kill everything around it. We call that poison alcohol. It works. Yeast turned sugar into a toxic wasteland and claimed the feast for itself. But then something strange happened. A curious primate tasted the poison and liked it. We weren't supposed to. Evolution should have taught us to spit it out, run away, never return. But instead, we came back for more. Within thousands of years, we weren't just drinking it. We were worshipping it, brewing it, building economies around it. A toxin meant to destroy life became the center of human life. And that's where the paradox begins. So what happens when you take that first sip? Within seconds, ethanol molecules slip through your stomach lining and into your bloodstream. They're small, fast, and unlike most chemicals, they don't need permission. They glide straight through cell membranes. And when they reach your brain, that's when the magic begins. First, alcohol floods your dopamine system, the circuit that says, this is good, do it again. Then it releases endorphins, your body's natural painkillers. Suddenly, the world feels softer, safer. But here's the trick. Alcohol doesn't just add good feelings. It removes control. Your prefrontal cortex, the part of you that worries, overthinks, and judges, starts to shut down. You're not braver. You're not funnier. You're not more charming. You're just less filtered. Alcohol amplifies GABA, the brain's calm down signal, and suddenly anxiety melts away. But this is the illusion. You're not connecting more deeply. You're numbing the fear of not connecting, and your brain, it remembers that trick. Every sip teaches your brain a shortcut, a way to feel okay without effort. And shortcuts always come with a cost. At first, it's harmless, a celebration, a way to unwind. But alcohol doesn't play fair. Inside your liver, enzymes scramble to break down ethanol before it poisons you. And they do. But they leave something behind. Acetaldehyde, a chemical 10 to 30 times more toxic than alcohol itself. This is what causes the damage, the hangover, the nausea, the long-term destruction. Acetaldehyde binds to your DNA, scrambles the code, and plants the seeds for cancer. Meanwhile, in your brain, something quieter is happening. Chronic drinking shrinks brain tissue, weakens memory, thins the connections between neurons. Even moderate drinking, just two drinks a day, accelerates brain aging by years. And here's the cruelest part, your brain adapts. It gets used to the dopamine flood. So now, normal life without alcohol feels flat. What started as a choice becomes a need. You don't drink to feel good anymore. You drink to feel normal. And every sip whispers the same lie. Just one more. Just tonight. Just this once. But biology doesn't forget. Every sip feels harmless until the damage is invisible but permanent. But alcohol doesn't just hurt the person holding the glass, it ripples outward. Every year, alcohol is involved in half a million traffic deaths worldwide. Half a million moments where someone who wasn't drunk paid the price for someone who was. It fuels over 100,000 murders and assaults annually. Relationships shattered. Lives stolen. Not because alcohol creates violence, but because it removes the barrier that stops it. And then there are the children who never got a choice. 600,000 babies are born every year with fetal alcohol disorders. 
lifelong cognitive damage, developmental delays, all because a developing brain was poisoned before it could even form. Alcohol is the third leading cause of preventable death globally. It destroys livers, hearts, minds, but the statistics don't tell the real story. Behind every number is a face, a name, a person someone loved. This isn't a war on alcohol. This is a mirror and it's showing us something uncomfortable. We've normalized the most dangerous drug on earth. So why do we keep drinking? If it's so dangerous, so destructive, why does humanity cling to it like a lifeline? Because for thousands of years, alcohol hasn't just been a drug, it's been our social glue. Think about it. How many friendships began over a beer? How many confessions happened after wine? How many connections felt real only after the walls came down? Without it, we feel exposed, vulnerable, awkward. Alcohol doesn't create connection. It numbs the fear of not being connected. It shortcuts the hard work of being seen, of being honest, of risking rejection. And for millennia, that shortcut worked. We married with it. We mourned with it. We sealed treaties and celebrated victories. Alcohol became the permission we gave ourselves to be human. But here's the question no one wants to ask. If we need a poison to feel brave enough to connect, what does that say about us? For thousands of years, alcohol has been our shortcut to connection. But shortcuts always take something in return. And now, something is changing. For the first time in modern history, a generation is drinking less. Gen Z consumes 20% less alcohol than millennials did at their age. And the trend is accelerating. They're choosing sobriety, mindfulness, clarity. They've seen the cost. They've watched their parents struggle. They've learned biology. And they're saying, maybe there's another way. But here's where it gets complicated. Because while drinking is down, loneliness is at an all-time high. Anxiety disorders are surging. Depression rates are climbing. Social isolation is now a public health crisis. So what happened? We removed the shortcut, but we didn't replace it. If alcohol was the social lubricant that held us together, what fills that space now? We're more connected than ever and lonelier than we've ever been. Because connection isn't just proximity. It's not just messages. It's not just likes. Real connection is vulnerability, risk, the courage to be seen, and that's terrifying. Maybe more terrifying than the hangover ever was. So where does that leave us? For 10,000 years, we've leaned on a poison to feel alive together. We laughed with it. I cried, built entire cultures around it. But here's the beautiful truth that biology teaches us. We're more resilient than we think. Brains heal, livers regenerate, connections, real ones, can be rebuilt. Maybe we don't need alcohol to be brave. Maybe we never did. Maybe the next generation will show us something we forgot. That courage isn't found in a bottle. It's found in showing up, sober, and saying this is me. The poison that shaped our past doesn't have to define our future. Maybe we no longer need a shortcut to feel alive together. Maybe the next generation will find courage and connection without the hangover. This was insane biology stories where life's strangest truths meet the science of being human. If this made you think, feel, or question, hit subscribe because we're just getting started.